And let's welcome in Sheriff Mark Daniels of Cochise County, Arizona. He is also chair of the Border Security Committee for the National Sheriff's Association. Sheriff Daniels, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Natasha. Thanks for having me. And with your county right along the southern border, what are you most concerned about when Title 42 ends? Well, something we've been addressing over the last 21 months is public safety. And three things that sheriffs look for is public safety, national security, and also humanitarian. So that's a big thing with my colleague sheriffs uh, throughout the nation, and we address that. Uh, it's a big thing we're concerned about here as this measure, Title 42, goes away next week. What's there to replace it on an operational plan? Uh, and I can tell you right now, we haven't seen it. We have not seen it. Uh, which continues on the lack of engagement we've had with this administration and Congress and also the president when it comes to addressing border issues. And uh, so it's, it's alarming to what's going to happen next week. How are you preparing in your county now and what advice are you giving to other border counties at this time? Well, we're, we're standing united. We are. I mean, I wish it'd be 100 percent. We know it's not when it comes to sheriffs, but those that are actually engaged in it and addressing it. Give you an example, Natasha, in my county since January of this year till November 15th, over 1,400 people were arrested for state crimes with a border connection. We've had over, since March, we've had over 500 victims of crimes, of felony crimes in my county uh, with a border nexus. It, it's a huge impact to my county. So we're gonna continue doing what we do. Uh, mayors, sheriffs, community leaders, Hopefully our governors, we have to stand united. We need the federal government not to throw money at it, but to fix, to fix the root cause. And that's border security, number one, immigration, number two. We just can't keep throwing money on this surge. It's never going to fix it. Well, what must the government, state, local, and federal do to prepare for the anticipated influx of migrants after Wednesday? Well, we know there's going to be a cost. There's no doubt about it. But that cost will continue, whether it's in New York, whether it's in Cochise County, whether it's in Denver, as you see on your broadcast here today. The bottom line is, what do we do to fix it? We have to collectively, collectively, excuse me, come together, work together, engage on this issue, and we got to separate border security from immigration. There are two different problems going on here. But if you don't secure the border, you'll never secure the immigration surge that keeps coming and address the asylum claims. That's number one, uh, and we're not doing that either. New York City has requested $1 billion in federal funding to help with the surge. And we know Washington, D.C. has already declared, you know, an emergency. We just spoke with the mayor of Denver on the show yesterday who also declared a state of emergency. Do you see these as overreactions or justified with the amount of asylum seekers expected to cross? Well, I, Natasha, I think they're justified. I mean, standing down here, I get very little from the federal government. We're right on the border. Uh, besides our agents that work hand in hand that are restricted right now because they've been re- um, reassigned for processing duties. So we're all dealing with these financial challenges. But what's not being discussed is why are they coming now? Why are we at such a record number? Five million, four million breaches, another million on top of that for gotaways in this country, over a thousand deaths on U.S. soil from migrants that came across the border and died on U.S. soil. That's humanitarian, but nobody's addressing how we secure and manage our border better. In fact, what I hear is lack of engagement by, by the fact is they have not sat down. And just to make this, Natasha, I think it's an important statement. The President Biden, we've asked numerous times that national sheriffs to sit down and talk to us. Let's engage our communities. He has never sat down with the sheriff in this country that I know of today. All right, Sheriff Daniel, certainly appreciate your perspective and time. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.